Mmm. It's now about 5.30 in the morning. The sun is just coming up and I'm packing to go to New York. So it is early in the morning and I am now driving to the airport in Los Angeles. I'm gonna fly to New York City where I'm gonna meet Olga. Are you filming yes. already? Okay. <laughs> what it is. And we are going to go to the last ever Ringling Brothers show. This is a TV screen, by the way. It's in this car, this is a little TV screen. And it's really interesting to go to a Ringling Brothers show with Olga because she was born in Russia. She'll tell you all this herself. She was born in Russia and she came over to the US on a visa to work for the circus. And then of course, most of you will know Olga because she got to be a very famous YouTube star, had a big channel, and then now is an entrepreneur in the fashion industry. Oh, you filming with this bigger camera now? Yeah, this is, this is what I normally film with. Hey, wait for the cop. How are you? Okay, so we are in a cab right now, and we are heading to, that's Olga right there. Hey, Olga. Why, why do you think they're having the last Ringling Brothers show in New York? The, the last ever, it's now what, 146 years? Is that right or something? Correct. 146 yeah, yeah, years. Yeah, yes, it's very old. But yeah, after 146 years as the greatest show on earth, now it's going away. Is okay, it fair so to say you came with a circus? Correct. Oh, uh, she come for the circus? Agent, yeah. <laughs> how do you, what are you gonna be performed here? Um, well, it was uh, juggling balls. Uh, juggling balls? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet you were. And what about you? And what about you? The, what about the, this uh, English? No, she's a knife thrower. Oh, she's a knife thrower? Oh, I'm a professional swinger. A swinger? Yeah. Swing the people. Oh, yeah. That's actually how you'll know each other. I'm gonna ask you. What does... No, it's the, the, the trapeze. Yeah. Oh, trapeze, okay. Yeah, I think right. you got... So, Olga, you came yeah. over... How old were you when you came over with the circus? So, I was 16, and I've been here for 18 years now. So, I was with the circus for two years with Ringling Brothers, and then uh, lots of different family circuses for another year. Olga was an OG YouTuber. And I'm, I'm talking past it here because you don't consider yourself a YouTuber anymore, right? Not anymore, not so much, no. And then now she started her own business with <laughs> loose swaps Which socks. is the socks, yeah, now I'm the sock lady. Uh, I never wanted to be called a YouTuber. I don't blame you, I'm but, the same way, man. Right? Yeah. But hey, call me sock lady all day. <laughs> Love it. With your accent, it came out a little bit like the suck lady. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll make sure to emphasize the O. Sock, Sock lady. lady. <laughs> and I guess I don't say it properly sometimes. <laughs> They're like, wait, what are you doing again? <laughs> well, you told me last night that uh, Jax Films had an entire segment of his show that was based on your grammar. Yeah, right? you guys probably know. Oh, Olga. And you don't think the Ringling Brothers did that? You don't think they innovated? No, not enough. Yeah. Because, you know, it was really cool 146 years ago. Oh, and I haven't seen a Ringling Brothers show in a while, but I think if you go see the show, you just feel like it's a very... Okay. Dated? Yeah, dated. I wouldn't say cheesy, but I want to insult performers because they're so amazing. Cheesy feel to it. When you go to Cirque du Soleil, you just want to go home and there's just so much passion that you yeah. bring home. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain, but... You yeah. want to go home and, uh, and install some like rings to hang off in your house. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A group of protesters over here protesting one of the last shows. I thought I'd see what they have to say. I'm John. Hey, John, nice to meet you. Who, yeah. who are you with? Oh, I have a YouTube channel, but I'm kind of curious about it. you guys are obviously out here protesting animals in captivity and used for entertainment. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we're out here protesting the inhumane treatment of animals in the circus and all, all abusive. Um, animals and entertainment, whether it's SeaWorld, whether it's Universal, we're here to let all the circuses know that if, that if they don't evolve, then they're going to be shut down as well. It's time to go animal free. You know, animal free is the future. The public is is done with abusive animal confinement, but you can have a wonderful, a wonderful performance with willing human performers who get to go home at the end of the day, who don't 
spend their time in arena basements or prison camps. Cirque du Soleil is going to be here in August. People can go to Cirque du Soleil. The Madison Square Garden just had Circus 1903. With wonderful human performers. There's no reason you need to use and abuse animals to have a good circus. Great to meet no you. No problem. Yeah, I'm Bernie, by the way. The official souvenir for the greatest show on earth available here. Thank you, baby. It's your chance to take home a part of history tonight. The last book of the greatest show on earth. Hold on, I'm gonna try to eat it and juggle at the same time. Ready? Ready. Do you want me to juggle four? You got it? Yeah. Let's change the scenery. Can you walk and do it? Um, yeah. When did you realize that you were gonna have a living as a juggler? Like, when did you get involved with the circus? Okay, so I ran away from my village at 14, joined the circus, wanted to be an aerial artist. And then they're like, nah, you're too old for everything. So the only thing you can maybe do is juggling. And I was like, I will never be a juggler. And then I became really good at it. I was like, well, if that's the only thing I can do in a circus to be a performer, sure, I'll do it. And then Ringling Brothers, the talent scouts came in to Moscow Circus and they were picking out new acts and that was it. And honestly, I was coming here for like two years and I was gonna go back. So I came here at 16, gonna go back at 18 and just start my adult life in Russia. But as I was here, I realized that I have no idea how to live in Russia once I was like 18. I was like, this is my life. I, I learned how to drive, I have a bank card, and I have a cell phone. I show up and I speak no English at all. So they said I have to go to school. I said, well, here's my diploma. And they said it's not translated. Uh, so we're gonna evaluate you and see where you belong. So because I didn't speak English, they put me in the second grade. So I was like, at guys, 14? At 16. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, guys, I'm flirting with boys and I'm wearing mini skirts. Now, this is before you would go to class with second graders. You're flirting <laughs> with the boys, right? Exactly. So, a day, your day job, you're working and flirting with the boys. Yep. And then you go hang out with eight year olds to learn English. Exactly. To learn English and do two plus two. You're going to walk four things. Four. Walk, the walk is a big part. Now, Maxim, you're telling me you got up to seven. Yes. Right? Which was impossibly hard. That was the yes. most you could juggle at one time. But uh, walking and doing it is an entirely different thing. It is, and especially hard because the sun is like right in my eye. You use your eyes to do it. Of course. Well, you have to see, right? So you don't follow the object, but you see through the pattern and you know where the balls will end up. So when did YouTube come into the picture? So I was a juggler trying to get all the juggling gigs in Los Angeles, and at that time I was booking. All the how many juggling gigs okay. are in there? <laughs> you know, there's lots of parties. I actually ended up booking like seven national commercials. So like Burger King and Smirnoff Vodka, and I was juggling everything. So I got to the point where I would go and audition, and all the other jugglers would be like, damn it, this girl again. I can turn and juggle. <laughs> As I was watching YouTube videos, it was like Lisa Nova and Lonely Girl 15, and they were talking to cameras, and I was just like, wait a second, I can do this, and maybe I can do it better. <laughs> I also did not know how to talk to camera or edit my videos. So when I started on YouTube, I really had zero skills as a YouTuber. So I had to kind of learn on the spot. And well, I've done that with the circus before with juggling, so I was like... I was gonna say, because you started, you did like, I don't want to do juggling, but you turned out you were good at it. You figured it out. Yep. If you can handle circus career, you can handle anything. Okay. This is like... Nailed it. <sighs> Look at that. That is the face <laughs> of a champion right there. Let's get some food. Let's do it. You were in a, a, like an experimental yep. part of the circus. You were in a one-ring circus, you yes. said, right? Yeah. And it's called Barnum Kaleidoscope. So you're finishing up your contracts while you're setting up other contracts, and then you have maybe one month in between, and then you go and start a job. And does everyone kind of come to work at the same time, meaning does like, the troops stay the same over the course of that two years, or do people come and go? People in our circus 
We stay together for two years. Man, and it's like you guys work together, you live together, you travel together. We party together. We party we together. Eat together every yeah. day. We had our own diner. You guys were like immersed. I, I always make this joke. By the end of two year contract, everyone slept with everyone. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I can imagine. I, I mean, like I was 17, I wasn't sleeping with the uh, people, but I got to see it. Like there's like so many scandals that would break out, so many marriages that would break, and. Can I tell you, I, yeah. I, as someone who's been to performances, live performance, Church of Soleil, Ringling Brothers, all that, I always assumed that the moment the curtain went down, that everyone immediately started having sex, and I'm glad to hear that's the case. It, it kind of is the case. It's like Olympic athletes. And was, yes, yeah. and everyone just looks fantastic. And there's something but like you know really, what's really attractive? I think you're gonna say what I'm gonna say. Yeah, seeing someone perform something yeah. really well, like expressing a talent, is like so attractive. It's it's intoxicating when it you is. see that. Yeah. Talk about your village in Russia first of all. Oh yeah, yeah. Like so, how, you you were born and raised there till fourteen. Born and raised till fourteen. Uh, it was around four hundred to maybe thousand people. I still don't know. I could walk across my village within forty minutes. Really? Are so you comfortable saying the name of the village? Stepnoya. Stepnoya. Uh, we didn't have a car. Uh, there's no buses. Now all of this almost makes sense for becoming a circus star. <laughs> none of it I makes sense. Hey, thank you. Almost none of it makes sense for becoming a YouTube star. Thank you for the pancake. You we're splitting. So. We're splitting the enormous breakfast. Yeah, there's just so much food. My dad would be getting paid in bags of grass. So then we can feed to our cows, and wow. then we can milk the cows and make the product like milk and cheese and sour cream or whatever else we need. And then you would do what with that? You wouldn't take it and sell it. You would we, give it. We could maybe sell it to our neighbors uh -huh. or exchange Got for it. different products. You barter with it. Yeah. See, even that's fascinating because most people grew up in a thing where it's like go get a job, earn money, and then pay for the things you want. Yes. But yours was like a stipend from the government, yeah. and then you had your job to do. And my mother would go to work every day. So is my dad. Because that's just how we programmed. You yeah. have to work no matter what. The electricity would be turned off from 5 p.m. till 5 a.m. We didn't have many things, but we did have a music teacher, so really? I learned how to play piano in my village. And then, so what? What made you decide? Like, what was the discovery of YouTube? I'm always excited of building something from scratch that no one really knows how to do yet. Right. And I can go and figure out. So it's like a very entrepreneurial way of putting myself through. <laughs> through the experience. A lot of people also told me back then, you're quitting juggling, you're one of the few female jugglers that are actually really good. Why would you do that? Yeah. And my answer was always, You're in the greatest show on earth. I mean, by, right? defi yeah, by exactly. definition, yeah. And, and I would say, I don't know why, but I think it's gonna be the biggest thing that right. will ever happen. When I started my sock company, I didn't wanna make just cool socks, right? I wanted to do something that was just like different. So why would I make another sock company, right? I was like, this is one of them. Is this too much? You, by the way, you're the only person I know who can do that at a table. <laughs> so when it comes to Ringling Brothers, when Cirque du Soleil came into play, they innovated the circus and the art of it. When such a competitor comes into your playground, you have to do something, right? You can't just continue being the same right. and expect that it's going to last just because you've been around longer. I feel bad that you guys haven't had a piece. Let's start walking. Let's start walking, man. I'll see you.